Okay, now we're going to talk about input output. Uh, first of all, there's a function in Python to get input from the user, and it's just called input. And you pass it a uh, one parameter, which is the prompt for what you want to uh, use to prompt the user for what they should enter. Uh, normally, you would end it with a space here for things to look good. And then you assign that to a variable. Uh, so they have a really simple example here. Uh, in this run code. So the input, place, please enter your name. So it's going to store whatever the user types here is their name. And then it's going to print your name in all caps is. We've already talked about the comma uh, will separate this string output a space and then it'll convert this to a string output. So this will do the uppercase of whatever the user input, comma, and then it says and has a length and then comma and then it calls the length function to print that out. So let's run this. And in the uh, when you're running it on the web page, it actually prompts you with a little dialog box. So I'm going to say I'm uh, my name is Tom Jones, and I'm going to hit OK. And you'll see that your name in all caps is Tom Jones and has length of nine. Uh, so that's the first part about strings. Now, if you want to input numbers you have a little issue because it everything comes in as a string. So we're going to learn the functions to convert to numbers. And the functions to convert something to a number are int, int, and float, f-l-o-a-t. So you'll see an example right here. Please input the radius of a circle. The user would input a radius. And then uh, once it inputs into a string, then you can uh, convert it to a float using this. So you just put a string that has the characters that would represent a floating point number and it'll convert it to a float then you can store that into a new uh, variable. Now you can do both of these on the same line just put the float uh, with the parameter as the input so you nest the input uh, calling the input function as the parameter for float. I prepared uh, this Python file called input formatting which you can download to show you uh, input. So here I'm going to get a name from the user which is going to be a string so I don't have to do any conversion here and the prompt is input your name. When you do a prompt you should always have a space at the end otherwise what the user starts typing uh, has no space between that and the name. I put a colon here as well. Uh, then I ask the user input the years of programming so here's the prompt and the input uh, function is called inside the float function to convert the string the user inputs into a floating point number and stores that into a variable. And here's an example of inputting an integer. So I input the string using the input and then I convert that to an int and it's stored into this. And then I do a calculation and then I print out uh, what's happened. Uh, now let's go ahead and run this first part. And I'll cover the rest of the file in a later section. And so it asks for the username here. And I'll say I've been programming for three years. And I've written 19 programs. And so it prints out uh, you have written 6.3333 programs per year. Uh, so that's basically input. And so let's go back and look at uh, our next topic, which is controlling some other options for the print statement. And this will control your output a lot more. So it shows here you can have the print statement with zero or more arguments. If you print it with no arguments, it just does a new line. If you print it with just one argument, it outputs that and does a new line. So normally it, it uh, outputs what you do and then does a new line. Uh, if you have arguments separated by commas, it basically concatenates them all with spaces separating them and then puts a new line. Uh, now, there's some keywords you can use. They're called keyword arguments. They have to appear at the end of your normal arguments. Uh, and there, there are methods and functions that do this in Python. So there's a keyword argument called sep, which stands for separator. And one that calls end, which uh, is what's going to be happening after the print statement prints your strings. So the separator uh, controls the separator which is normally a space if you don't specify it. But if you specify it, it 
it puts that separator between your strings that you're outputting. So it, it, this, in this case, it puts this star, star, star between hello world. And the end keyword controls what to output after you've printed everything. The default, if you don't specify it, is to go to a new line. So it's the backslash end character. Uh, in this case, they're going to change the end to star, star, star. So it prints hello space world, star, star, star. And you notice the prompt is still in the same line. So the effect of replacing the end is it will not go to a new line after it's printed, which means if you print again, it'll it'll come out on this end of the line you've already been printing. Now let's look at an example in PyCharm of this. So I have this file which is called print sep end, and it has a little uh, uh, orientation to the print statement here, and this is also going to show you what you normally use sep for. So uh, you could print a bunch of strings independently and then say sep works for. So that's going to say Joe works for Tom, works for Sally. And here's one which is uh, a more common. You have a bunch of strings and you want to put commas between them. Now here's looking at the new line character. So normally if you print three lines it'll put these three names on different lines. So after it prints out the three names on separate lines, I put the word viz so you can see the difference here. And now it's going to print the three names on the same line by replacing the ending, which is normally going to a new line with a space. So this will print Joe and then a space, and then it'll be sitting there for the next print statement. And then it's going to put Tom in a space and sit there for the next print statement. And then Sam in a space and sit there for the next print statement. And finally end, and then finally this doesn't have an ending uh, end set, so it's going to do a new line. So let's see how that works. And you can see it has the three lines and then via verse and then uh, it has Joe, Tom, Sam and end all on the same line and then it's gone to a new line. Uh, so that's it on the separation and end.